All right, so we just looked at uh, what happens when you have two populations that you're comparing. Um, you're comparing their means, you're looking at the difference between means, and you know the standard deviation of the, uh, of the underlying populations. What if you don't know the standard deviation of the underlying populations? Well, there's not that big a difference here. Okay? It just means we're going to be using a different test statistic. The hypotheses are the same. We're still interested in the same question. right? We still want to know something about this kind of belief mu1 minus mu2 uh, let's say we're doing a, what's that a left tailed test we want to know if this difference is big right relative relatively big um, and we even if whether we know the standard deviation of those underlying distributions or not we're still going to use these same hypotheses right the alternative to this one is going to be mu1 minus mu2 is actually small Right, smaller than d0 um, and we're going to go through you know that's going to be step one is going to look like that step two is always going to be choosing alpha step three is going to be choose a test statistic and this is it gets a little different here now this is still true we still have these two underlying distribute two populations right so if two populations they both have x as some characteristic that we care about and that x has now two means and two standard deviations um, and those, you know, what that means is that we can draw samples from here, right? So we can take x bar 1 and x bar 2. And these themselves are going to, these distributions, the sampling distributions are going to have their own uh, means and standard deviations. What that means is, well, and we talked about this before, if we take x bar 1 minus x bar 2, which is our best guess of these, of that difference, this itself is a random normally distributed variable, as long as you have large samples, right? What that means is that we have a curve that looks like this, where what we're, what this value is, is x bar 1 minus x bar 2. You draw two random samples, and it's essentially like you're pulling out of a hat like this, you know, that has all numbers in it that are shaped like this, where this is the true underlying difference, and that's the mean of this distribution. Um, and you also have a sampling distribution standard deviation, which is kind of messy um, relative to what we've been working with, but still not so, so bad, right? It's stuff you can do with your calculator, not stuff you need to use a computer to program. So it's not so bad. Plug that stuff in, and what that means is this sh that's the shape of the randomness of this value, right? This is this value is random, and that means you might pull one from here, you might pull one from here. Probably you're going to get something sort of in the middle. Very rarely will you get something out here. You're never going to get something all the way out on the sides. That just doesn't. It's unlikely. Um, so what's also true then is because this is normal, we still could relate it to the uh, to the standard normal distribution. The problem is. We don't know, we can't use a score form formula because we don't know the, these, right? We don't know these things, sigma 1 and sigma 2. What that means is that we have to estimate them, right? We estimate them like this. We're going to use S1 over S1 squared over N1 plus S2 squared over N2. And that means that instead of using the T distribution, we're going to have to account for the fact that we, we're going to be a little bit off, right? We have a little bit less, in the, a little bit more in the tails, a little bit less in the hump, makes this a t distribution. So we can scrap this and scrap this, um, and it has a certain number of degrees of freedom. What this means is that if we pull this, te if we pull a, a sample, two samples, and we get, uh, we're, we're also essentially pulling a t value. And this is how we calculate the t value, s1 squared over n1 plus s2 squared over n2. So that any pairs of sample means, x bar 1 and x bar 2, um, that come, and those samples also come along with their sample uh, standard deviations, s1, s1 and s2, is going to give us a value of t. And that t is pulled from this distribution, right? It's the t distribution, the red one that I'm drawing here. It's a little bit different than a z distribution. We've looked at them before. Um, but it has a, a number of degrees of freedom. This gets a little messy, okay? And I would, you know, you don't have to memorize this. I would recommend that you refer to your formula sheet if you ever need to calculate this, which you will at least a couple times. But the degrees of freedom is this, okay? It looks like S1 squared over N1 plus 
S2 squared over N2. That quantity squared over 1 over N minus N1 minus 1 times S1 squared over N1. The quantity squared plus 1 over N2 minus 1 times S2 squared over N2, the quantity squared. Okay, as you can see, it's kind of messy, um, but it's nothing you can't figure out. What I recommend when you do this is that you find these values, S1 squared over N1 and S2 squared over N1, N2, I'm sorry, and write these down separately because if you see, if you call this A and call this B, just for now, you see that this is A, this is A, this is B, this is B. So you can just plug those in and it simplifies a little bit at least. You don't have to do those same calculations again and again and again. Okay, so you plug this stuff in, you get your degrees of freedom, and then you always round down because this is going to give you a decimal. You just round down, you floor it. Um, and that's how you find your degrees of freedom. It's pretty straightforward. Um, it's a little messy, but it's the sort of thing that you can do. Okay, a few notes. Uh, this works even for even very well for small sample sizes, unless you have very skewed populations or outliers. But if you can, uh, you can do pretty well with a t distribution. So let's look at a, a practice problem here, just to practice with this. I'm not sure we'll get through this whole thing, um, but we can at least calculate probably the degrees of freedom. Okay. So we want to formulate hypotheses so that if the null hypothesis, oh, sorry, are nursing salaries in Tampa, Florida lower than those in Dallas, Texas? Salary data show staff nurses in Tampa earn less than staff nurses in Dallas. Suppose that in a follow-up study of 40 staff nurses in Tampa, 50 staff nurses in Dallas, you obtain the following results. And these are the results they give us kind of nicely in a table. They want to formulate hypotheses so that uh, if the null hypothesis is rejected, we conclude that salaries for staff nurses are lower than for those in Dallas. So we'll call these one. And two, this should be, say, staff nurses in Tampa. So we want to conclude that staff nurses in Tampa are lower than Dallas, which means the mean in Tampa minus the mean in Dallas is going to be less than zero. That's what that means, right? I'll work this problem on your own. Figure out why that's true, why this works. That's a little exercise for you. Why are these the hypotheses? Um, and you can take it as salaries for staff nurses. That's one. Those in Dallas is one variable, is one number, and then are lower than. Uh, works out like this. Okay. It says use alpha equals 0 0.05. So that's step two done. Part B is asking for the value of the test statistic. So we just looked at the test statistic. I just explained it to you. We know this because we have S's here. right? That S means we're looking at sample standard deviations. We don't know the population standard deviation. So that means we have to use a T distribution. It's going to be x bar 1 minus x bar 2 minus d0 over the square root of s1 squared over n1 plus s2 squared over n2. Now, step 4 asks us to plug this stuff in. So, uh, should make it nice and orderly. Uh, we kind of don't have time, really. So we have these six things. We have n1, n2, s1 s2, x1, and x2 all in this table, and then d0 comes from right here, so d0 is going to be 0. So we can plug this stuff in. Let me change colors quick. And we have x bar 1 minus x bar 2 is 56,100 minus 59,400 minus 0, all over the square root of 6,000 squared divided by 40 plus 7,000 squared divided by 50. Where's Excel? Should have it open still. There we go. Okay, so what do we have? 56,100 minus 59,400. Negative 3,300 on top. 6,000 squared divided by 40. Uh, 7,000 squared divided by 50. Add these together and take the square root. And you get negative 3,300 on top and 1,371 on the bottom. Divide 3,300 by 1,371. And negative 2.41 is our test statistic. So, oops, it is. Cancel. Uh, 
equals negative 2.41. Okay, so that's our test statistic, and that's part B. They want to know what the p-value is. So, in order to get the p-value, we're going to have to look at our. We're going to have to figure out our degrees of freedom. Now, if you remember, this is kind of a big honking mess. Um, 6,000 squared divided by 40. We already figured that out, though. So, we know that uh, s1 squared over n1 equals 900,000. And S2 squared over N2 equals 980,000. So our degrees of freedom, if you recall, is... Uh, let me look at my notes just to make sure I get this right. S1 squared over N1 plus S2 squared over N2 squared. All over 1 over n1 minus 1 times s1 squared over n1 quantity squared plus 1 over n2 minus 1 times s2 squared over n2 quantity squared. Okay, and plug this stuff in. Uh, There's going to be 900,000 plus 980,000 on top. Let's calculate the numerator. And the numerator is going to be 1.88 million. 1.88. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, over, now we need the denominator. Oops, Daisy. So it's going to be equals 1 divided by 49. Oops. Equals 1 divided by 49 times 900,000 squared. And this is going to be equal, uh, this should be 39, sorry. 39 equals 1 divided by 49 equals this times 980,000 squared. So, we add these together, and then take this, and where's our numerator again? Oh, it's, it's, it's going to be this, I forgot to square this. Okay, so it looks like we have 87 degrees of freedom. Work the math out, use paper, you should get 87 degrees of freedom. We round down, if you recall. So we got 87.55, but we just take off the digits to get 87. It's 1.88 million squared over uh, these things added together. I'm not even going to write it. It's messy. It's about 87. That's the number of degrees of freedom we have. Okay, that's good. Take some work. Don't want to have to do that every day, but you can certainly you can certainly do it. Let's get our t table up. Okay, so now we know we have 87 degrees of freedom, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to bound our p-value now. So our test statistic was not this one. Um, our test statistic was 2.4 negative 2.41. That means that we have a t distribution that looks like this uh, that had 87 degrees of freedom, and we got negative 2.41. We're doing a left tail test uh, centered at zero, so we want to know what this area is here. Now on a t-table, go to 87, 2.41 falls between these two rows, or these two columns, which means that our p-value falls between those the, the tops of those two. 2.37, 2.634, so 0.01 and 0.005 is our p-value. 0 0.005 is less than our p-value is less than 0 0.01. Um, and since we were working at the 5% uh, alpha, we know that our p-value is less than alpha, and that means that we are going to reject the null. Now, the way we set it up in the first place was such that rejection of the null meant that we can conclude that salaries for staff nurses are lower, or in Tampa, are lower than for those in Dallas. So because we reject the null, we accept the alternative and conclude for Part D that Tampa nurses get paid less. Why? Well, that's, that's for another study, but that's what we can conclude. That's how we do it. A lot of this stuff is just calculation at this point. Pardon me. Uh, um, getting that degrees of freedom is a little bit messy, but once you can do it, once you have the formula down and, and practice with it, it's not so hard. Okay, so if you have any questions, please leave a comment or email me at jjdelaney at ualr.edu, and I'll be glad to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks, guys. Bye.